okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Refuse me from tagging, what are going on? We are live, we are live. Uh, let me see if I can put the graphics. Today we get to understand uh, the difference between scaling and growing your business. That's the big topic today. What should you be doing? So, uh, as uh, as people get on, as as uh, as we prepare, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, the difference between scaling your business and growing your business, and what should you be doing. Okay, so yeah, that's what we are going to be talking about. Um, I just need to add some graphics here. What should you be doing when it comes to your business? Should you be scaling? Should you be uh, growing the business? What do you prefer? Do you prefer business growth? Do you prefer uh, business scaling? Yeah? What do you prefer? That's the question for today. What do you prefer? Scaling. versus growth what do you prefer as you get onto this live you should be thinking about that as we discuss today uh, what do you prefer for your business okay a lot of entrepreneurs out there uh, always focus on the wrong thing and that's why we have you know, in Africa, we have uh, we have one of the highest percentages for business startups. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, we have a lot of what are called uh, enter, uh, uh, briefcase entrepreneurs, briefcase CEOs. But when you check on them after a year, you realize that uh, the business is already dead. It's it's uh, six feet under. Yeah. Why? Because they focused on the wrong things. They rushed, uh, they were admiring another, another businessman and then they rushed and then they did the wrong things uh, in a quest to catch up with other Fortune 500 businesses, with other uh, big established uh, companies out there. So, what should you be doing? That's we, what we are going to discuss today, okay? That is what we are going to be discussing today. So what do you think we should be doing? What do you think you should focus on as an entrepreneur? What should you focus on? What should you be focused on? What should you focus on? Scaling or growth? Let me know in the comments. Okay? Let me know in the comments. Today we are tackling that. Why? Uh, once you understand this, then you will know what you should focus on so that your business survives for over <laughs> for over for over 10 years yeah you need to build businesses that last generations yeah so uh, when you begin to to rush and do things haphazardly you'll find that your business won't last even 3 months so what should you be doing what should you be focusing on okay so that's, uh, that's the biggest question today, scaling versus growth. Scaling versus growth. That is what we are talking about today. So let me check out a few comments uh, right now. Um, let's check out a few comments. Let's check out a few comments. Okay, so Helen says she prefers scaling. Ha! 
that's a good choice. <laughs> that's that's a good choice. Uh, Helen, tell us why you prefer scaling. Why do you prefer scaling to business growth? Why do you prefer scaling to business growth? So I think uh, we have some quorum. Uh, yep, we have some quorum. So let's get started now. Today I've specifically come in uh, to address this thing called business scaling. Yeah. Now, full disclosure, full disclosure, scaling is much better than growth when it comes to your business. So I don't care whether you're in digital uh, marketing, whether you run an online shop, whether you have, uh, whether you have a physical address. Uh, in, as an entrepreneur who has, who has understood how business works, who has understood how economies of scale work, you should always focus on scale, okay? Are we together up to that point? And I'm going to, I'm going to differentiate the two. I'm going to define, to define for you uh, the difference between, the difference between um, scaling and, the di and, and growth, okay? And what you need to be doing, okay? Now, I'm not going to give you the textbook, the textbook uh, definition. I'm not going to give you the, 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 the dictionary definition. I am going to give you, I'm going to break it down for you so that you understand it in a simple uh, or layman's uh, uh, language so that you know exactly what to go for, okay? Now, number one, number one, growth, business growth is where an entrepreneur focuses on on in installing or adding on the structures of a business or the resources of a business, okay? So, what do I mean by that? What I mean is, imagine you are a CEO or you are, you are an entrepreneur, okay? Imagine you are a CEO or an entrepreneur, and then you want you want your business to, to go to the next level. If, if, you, if you decide to hire more employees, if you decide to hire more employees, then that is not scary. That is business growth. Why? That means you are focusing more on, on bringing in resources or you're adding on the structures of the business, okay? Now, that takes, that in most cases, takes away from the business. Imagine uh, you want your, your business to go to the next level and then you increase on office space or you go and rent uh, a much uh, bigger, uh, bigger space in the city, okay? Now, that is not business, that is not scaling, that is growth, okay? So whether you imagine you are you are an entrepreneur or you are a digital uh, you are a digital marketing CEO, yeah. Now, if there's one thing you have to understand about digital or online business, in most cases you don't need to rush to having a physical location. There are so many uh, freelancers out there who are making uh, thousands of dollars monthly but they do not have a physical location. What did they focus on? They focused on scaling rather than growth, okay? So I hope you've understood the meaning of uh, business growth, okay? Now, let me define for you what scaling your business means vis-a-vis -vis growth, okay? Now, let's look at scaling. Now, when, when you look at uh, scaling your business, Scaling your business is where you as a CEO, you as an entrepreneur, you as a business person, you focus on growing the productivity or profitability of your business, okay? So, what does this mean? What does this mean? I hope you've understood it up to there, okay? What does that mean? What this means is you focus on improving the number of people you serve okay if it's not the number of people it's the profitability remember sometimes the business to make profits may not depend on how many people you serve it may depend on the quality of the products that you you churn out or that you produce okay 
So that's what scaling is about. While growth is about increasing the, the, the structures and the, the resources of the business, scaling focuses on profitability and service to your clients, okay? I hope we are clear up to that point. I hope we are clear up to that point. Again, if you have any questions, post them in the comment section and then I'll get back to you. So, now, up to that point, what do you prefer? Do you still prefer growth or do you prefer uh, scaling as a business person? What do you prefer? So, I think up to that point, it's up to this point, it should be clear to anyone who is watching this live that you should be focusing on scaling your business, okay? And since that is clear, how do you scale your business, okay? How do you scale your business? Let's get into that, okay? Let's get into that. Now, I don't care which kind of business you have. I don't care if you sell charcoal. <laughs> I don't care if you have a boutique or you, if you have a, 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 a premium a saloon or if you sell books. One of the best ways, the number one method you can use to go to scale your business is going virtual, okay, or going online taking your business online. Why? Remember, <laughs> okay, Abe, Abe uh, says he prefers scaling. <laughs> okay, nice to see you, Abe. Now, and Abe, you need to scale your business. Abe, you need to scale your business. Uh, you are one of the best martial artists in the world. You need to scale it, bro. You need to take it to the next level, yeah? I hope we are clear up to that point, Abe. Okay, so what was I saying? You need to go virtual as an entrepreneur, as a businessman. With the way things have been shaken up, with the way the world has been turned upside down, if by now, if your business is not online, then you have a worm in the head, okay? I have no uh, polite way of, of saying this. You have, you have a worm in the head, okay? You need to take your business virtual. Why? This allows you to reach it allows you to reach a much bigger audience, a, a, a wider uh, uh, market, yeah? So, if your business is not virtual, then you lose out on scaling, okay? So, whatever your product is, whether you're selling uh, lingerie, yeah? Whether, you're, whether you're, you're a coach, whether you're a consultant, whatever it is you're doing, you have to find a way of packaging your services so that they go online, so that you reach, you reach a wider a wider market, okay? Now, what does, uh, what does this do? What this does is it allows your business to keep running whether you are at the beach in Hawaii, whether you're sleeping, or whether you are in office, okay? So that's the importance of scaling your businesses, okay? So, uh, what's this? Who is this? Okay. <laughs> Okay, now, scaling a business will always help you to serve even when you are unavailable. And I think that's one important aspect that we need to focus on as we go through this line. I hope we are clear up to that point. Take your business virtual. If you haven't taken your business virtual, then uh, you, you, are, you, you really, you, you're thinking small, okay? You're thinking small. I need you to stay with me on this. You need to go virtual. You need to find a way of taking your business online. Right now, it is so easy to take your business online. In case you wonder how to take your business online, still, uh, leave me a comment and then I will, I will share with you a link on the easiest ways uh, you can take your business online. Now, now that we have covered that, the second, and, uh, the second way you can take uh, you can scale your business is through automation. Are we clear up to them? <laughs> William! <laughs> William, uh, stay tuned, William. And I think you're going to benefit uh, a lot from this. I know what you're into. 
William, stay with me. William, stay with me. I know what you're into. You're going to benefit from this. <laughs> the best thing that has happened is the development of AI. In the world we are right now, the best thing that has happened is the development of AI. And it is still getting more advanced. Okay? Oh, what, what I, uh, by AI, I mean artificial intelligence. Right now, everything has artificial intelligence in it. Um, you, if, you look at, if you look at the camera I'm using right now, when I move, it, it, uh, it focuses on me. It changes the lighting. Okay? I'm sure by now you've noticed that. So it has, it has a chip in there that tells it uh, that I've moved further away from the lens or I've moved closer and the lighting has changed. So it keeps readjusting. Okay? So what does automating mean? I imagine a situation where you, you, you're on Facebook and then you see, you see an ad and then you go to that website and after going to that website, you don't do anything on that website and then you leave. Instead of buying, let's say you went to Amazon. Amazon.com, uh, the famous, the famous uh, online shop. Let's say you went to Amazon.com and then you did not purchase. When you go back to Facebook, you will begin to see a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, either information or advertisements or updates from Amazon. Okay. Why? Because Amazon is using artificial intelligence. When you went to their website, uh, the AI uh, realized you were there and it tracked you. So the, it used what are called cookies. And then it continued to follow you wherever you, you went. Okay? So even if you go to, to CNN.com uh, to read some news about how, how Trump is failing, how Trump will never be the president of the U.S. <laughs> I'm just saying this to get on someone's on someone's nerves. <laughs> Don't attack me in the comments. <laughs> Don't attack me in the comments, okay? So when you go to CNN, you realize that uh, there will be an ad of Amazon somewhere on the side. That is AI, okay? Again, while we are talk, we are still talking about Amazon. Uh, Amazon uh, created uh, created a Amazon created a shop, not a shop, a supermarket called Amazon Go. I'll share the link in the comment. They created a supermarket called Amazon Go, where you get in with an app on the phone, you get in, there are no cashiers, there are no uh, uh, attendants, no one, uh, you just go in, you browse, it's a physical supermarket, you browse whatever you want, you pick whatever you want, you don't pay anyone, and then you leave. Okay? It's called Amazon Go. You Google Amazon Go. So all you do is enter the supermarket, and then after that, you get out of the supermarket without paying anyone. What happens is, once you leave the supermarket, then your Amazon account, or the, because you have the app on your phone, it will be charged. They will deduct the money from your Amazon account, okay? So, yeah, basically what they have done is they have done out with the human resource. All they have left are, are chefs and the people who, who refill uh, the, the, the aisles, yeah? So, that's what we call automation. Now, that's the next level when it comes to scaling, yeah? So, if they put up so many supermarkets of that sort, they have taken out the human factor. And all they are doing is just uh, stocking the supermarket. Okay? So look at the profitability. Look at the margins that they are making when it comes to business, when it comes to selling their products. Okay? So that's what we call automation. You could also automate your, uh, let's say, uh, like my brother William, you could set up a shop, an online shop. And then, and then what happens is when people come to your shop and they don't buy, but they, they, okay, let's say, let's say they filled in, they wanted to purchase a product. And then they filled in the email address and whatever, but then they stopped on the way. 
yeah in the checkout process they stopped on the way they did put in uh, their mobile money details or their visa card details then what happens is your system starts to send them reminders you don't have to pick up a phone to call them no that is the next level of scale you've automated your process your selling process your sales funnel has been automated and so you begin making money through that so your system follows up on clients and then clients either complete the purchase or it upsells them on other products in your online shop okay i hope we are clear up to that point so that is what is called automation yeah i hope we are clear up to that point then the other thing is you can scale with new tech yeah you can scale with new tech the world we are living in right now the the development of technology is so fast in that if as an entrepreneur if you're not up to date with how far technology has gone you may miss out on a lot of money okay let me give you an example uh, as the pandemic hit the entire world as the pandemic the covid uh, pandemic hit the entire universe uh, there is a, a furniture shop called ikea in the us there's a furniture shop called ikea so what happens is because people could no longer people could no longer come into the shop to to view to see the furniture you know so ikea developed uh, a technology whereby all you do is get their app on your phone yeah are, are you with me get the app on your phone get the ikea app on your phone and then you browse now as you're browsing i will share the link with you in the comment section as you're browsing as you're browsing you pick one of the or maybe a chair that fascinates you yeah you like the color you like how it looks like so you pick a chair that you like and then you view you 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 place the phone on the space where you want the chair to be in your sitting room and then the phone will show you how that chair will look like in your sitting room okay now think about that think about how far they had to go and how they had to think yeah the thinking process that they had to go through they were thinking scaling yeah so now imagine if you did not have that technology you would require people who would carry the furniture from the store take it to someone's home the person looks at the person uh, either appreciates how it looks like in their sitting room or does it now if they don't like how it looks like in their sitting room then that manual labor would have to pick the furniture take it back to the shop okay so again that would not be scaling scaling is when you use the technology uh, you, the the customer doesn't have to call you the customer doesn't have to to move to the shop okay or you the entrepreneur or ceo or your employees do not have to move to to the client's uh, home with the furniture so the app takes care of that so that is what we that's what we are looking at when we talk about scaling so look at your business how can you add technology how can you automate yeah when it comes to your business how can you automate and reduce on the human factor reduce on the physical aspects of the business yeah so i hope we are good up to that point so it's a beautiful one i'm having fun i hope you're also having fun continue to send me some questions and i will answer as we go along now the other the the fourth the fourth method you can use the fourth method that you can use to scale your business is providing b2b solutions and still this is in the technology arena right now providing b2b solutions has become so easy let me share with you an example let's say you are let's say you are in um, no let me give you an example of airbnb i hope you you know about airbnb so a lot of people uh, clients for example wanted to 
wanted to hotels have become so expensive yeah no that's not a good example let me share a different example let's say you're in web design i'm in web design so this this is this hits home for me i'm in web design so let's say you are a web developer you're a web designer and then you want to you want to scale your business you cannot you cannot uh, you cannot scale your business by just increasing on the number of clients you have why you are a one man army how many websites can you do in a week yeah if you are to do 10 websites in a week <laughs> there will be the ugliest websites that have ever been designed so what can you do what you can do is create templates for example create themes create plugins so that you support other web developers okay so people come to your website and buy themes uh, look at a, a platform like theme forest for example it sells plugins it sells uh, themes it sells uh, it sells uh, it sells uh, page builders for web de designers you'll understand the language yeah so that is what we call b2b solutions so if 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 you're in the let's say you are you are a restaurant you are a restaurant owner yeah you could design an app that enables uh, that enables chefs to come up with the recipes for example in record time <laughs> or oh, oh, you can enable chefs to to come up with the recipes that that have never been uh, uh, discovered <laughs> in the world i'm not a chef so uh, i don't know what i'm talking about but i hope you get the idea i hope you understand what i'm talking about come up with b2b solutions why when you are solving uh when you provide solutions to businesses it's much easier for you to scale your own business okay i hope we are clear up to that point then the other method you can use is partnerships form partnerships Sometimes running as a one-man army is not easy. You may not have all the solutions, yeah? So you can form partnerships with other providers, uh, people who, have, uh, who can provide what you do not have, and then you can, you can, uh, you can discuss the arrangement, the shares, and all that, yeah? You, so that is another way to go, especially for physical businesses where you have, uh, maybe, uh, let's say, you look at, look at, um, Look at, uh, for example, if you look at uh, fuel stations, for example, many fuel stations have partnered with uh, drive-through uh, fast food restaurants. Yeah, so many fuel stations around the world. It doesn't matter whether whether it's Total, uh, whether it's uh, what's the other? It used to be Shell. Yeah, Vivo Energies. They have partnered with so many. Uh, drive-through restaurants, yeah. So because uh, Shell or the, uh, the fuel stations could not provide uh, foods and snacks, they partnered with uh, people or businesses that could provide that solution, yeah. So I hope that's clear. So you can find what if your clients require a, a, another service that you cannot provide. You can partner with someone else who provides that service and then you discuss uh, how to share the profits. Yeah? Okay? Then you can also do, uh, still this is the same as uh, partnerships, company takeovers and mergers. Yeah? So I don't need to elaborate on that. Then, <laughs> this is a beautiful one, especially in the technology world, getting acquired. You can... <laughs> Timely discussion, thank you. Rosie Sembatia, thank you so much, Rosie Sembatia. And uh, Abe, you say, I love the automations. Yeah, uh, especially for you, Abe. Abe, we have to talk. Abe, we have to talk. I know what you're into. Abe, we have to talk. Okay? Abe, we have to talk. Rosie, thank you so much. Uh, we are still going on. <laughs> Scaling versus growth, what do you prefer? Let's continue. So, Getting acquired. Now, this is a juicy one, especially for 
developers in technology yeah, 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 uh, there are if you've been noticing the trends let me give you an example let me give you an example of uh, YouTube yeah let me give you an example of YouTube now YouTube initially was was a uh, was a different company from Google yeah it, it was just a bunch of guys they set up servers and they started hosting people's videos okay but then they could not keep up with the with the Lord the people who required the services were too many yeah and lucky enough Google finds out about YouTube and so Google comes in because Google is already a big establishment and it could provide the services to to billions of people Google acquires YouTube for billions and billions of dollars yeah so the YouTube guys as we speak now no longer need to work they don't need to go to work though they still work with Google but they don't need to work anymore yeah look at uh, look at WhatsApp many of you know WhatsApp WhatsApp started as a totally different platform where people could engage where people could share where people could chat then facebook realizes whatsapp is uh, is going to overtake them so what facebook does it offers billions and billions of dollars to whatsapp and the whatsapp developers said huh fine if you offer i mean if they offer you over 11 billion dollars what, what else do you need so the whatsapp guys allowed to be uh, taken over by facebook yeah so many so many people have been acquired by bigger companies uh, you can look at uh, even in logistics there is a uh, even in logistics pedagam eater fried if you look at uh, if you look at caltex in the fuel industry uh, they got acquired by uh, i think i think they were acquired by um, by uh, shell which is now called uh, helen what is shell now Vivo, yes, Vivo Energy is acquired them. Then uh, if you look at, uh, there is another fuel station that got acquired by Total, the recent one. So, which one? Gapco, yes. Yeah, Gapco. So, the, if, if you're a small startup and you have a brilliant idea, in most cases, a big company that has the structures, that has the di distribution systems, may end up acquiring you and in the end you will have scaled up do you understand what i'm talking about you will have scaled up and most of these acquisitions most of these acquisitions you'll find that the the person who started the person who started the the company the small company is not fired they always end up working for the big company that acquires them okay then the final uh final the final method you can use as I take a, a bit of juice. A second. Okay, let's go through some likes here, comments. Okay. interesting interesting okay <laughs> okay let's continue <clears throat> so this is the final method that you can use to scale your business okay if you look at all the methods that i've been talking about uh that i've been talking about all involve partnerships and adding branches and doing whatever however this final one is totally opposite to those this is where what is called product splinter okay and this works well especially for coaches trainers uh, consultants yeah product splitter uh, look at it this way imagine you are a coach or a trainer or a consultant who does uh, who does leadership uh, uh, in your company you do leadership training you do culture change you do team building and then uh, you also do you also do online courses yeah look at it that way so you're doing all this in within the company okay 
and all of it is small time yeah all of it is small time so what do you do what do i mean by product splintering product splintering is where you you look at your business model look at everything that you are working on and then this uh what you identify some of the some of the products that are bringing in uh, uh bringing in a lot of uh, income stream yeah and then those also become major products for the organization yeah so if you're doing leadership you're doing culture change yeah and you're also doing online courses on the side but then later on you realize the online courses are also bringing in bringing in uh, uh, a lot of money they are bringing in uh, they are bringing in uh, income they are bringing in clients yeah you could then decide to get the online courses create for them an entire platform okay that's what we call product splitter uh, create for them an entire platform you could even create for it a totally different website or if you could create for it a subdomain yeah so it could become uh, e tutoring uh, dot dot uh, coaches dot com for example yeah so it becomes an entirely different product and then you push out push it out push it out and market it like crazy yeah so what you're doing there is you are scaling other aspects of the business while you are doing it small time but then you've realized it, it has potential to to bring the business even more clients and finances so you you split it you pick it uh, make it its own product make it its own package package it properly give it a beautiful brand and then market it like crazy yeah i hope we are clear up to that point so that is the final point now as a business person yeah as a business person whether you're starting out wherever you are in your journey whether you're midway whether you're in the evening of your business as a business person as an entrepreneur as you run your business you should always focus on scaling your business what are the methods you can use to scale your business yeah even as you're starting as you're writing your business proposal you're writing your business plan yes you can start with small steps yeah but always have it at the back of your mind you should always think about the methods that you use to scale your business when the time is right okay i hope we are clear up to that point okay other than that it has been an amazing session i've loved the interaction i've loved the views thank you so much for always standing up for this i will have another live tomorrow if you want to learn so much more on how you can scale up your business how you can take your business to the next level uh, uh just uh come leave me a comment and then i'll share with you a link where you can go to learn so much more of these ideas okay scaling is the best way to go when you are running your business okay other than that love you so much thank you for always turning up and i will see you in the next live at Salavista. vista